good morning the topic is here here the subject is same a few days back uh, one topic was discussed uh, uh, that topic was uh, simple pendulum and uh, one more thing was discussed i have no forgotten anyway this is the third topic from the subject of theory of machines or dynamics of machines okay uh, the topic is uh, ratio of belt tensions for open belt drive ratio of belt tensions for open belt sorry uh, belt drive okay ratio of belt tensions for open belt drive so to uh, do this first you draw an open belt drive say this is the bigger pulley and this is the smaller pulley say this is driver okay this is driver and this is the follower uh, this is not visible this is follower okay so this is the driver this is the follower these are the centers these are the pulleys and these are the belts like this okay say this belt uh, this pulley is uh, rotating inside uh, in this direction that is clockwise direction so this is also clockwise for open belt drive if this is clockwise so this is also clockwise say this is the slack side slack side and this is the tight side right this is the tight side and here uh, say tensions here tension is t1 and here tension is t2 so for this part direction should be just opposite okay like this so uh, and here also uh, our target is to calculate ratio of belt tensions so to do that uh, say you just draw you take this point and you draw a straight line up to the center of the pulley and here also you do the same thing okay and see this angle is theta so theta is the angle subtended by the belt at the center of the driven pulley okay this pulley is the driven one driven pulley this is driven pulley and this is the driver pulley i have written here driver pulley okay here i have written follower follower can also be called okay so this is the arrangement so here we can see that there are two tensions t1 and t2 so we have to find the ratio of t1 and t2 okay this is our target what is the value of t1 and t2 so that is the target okay so uh, since the size of the board is so small so i have to erase this one and then only i can uh, show you the calculation procedure okay then only I'll, i can show you so let me erase this one and uh, so i am drawing only the driven pulley here say this is the driven pulley okay this is the driven pulley and here this is the center say this is the angle subtended by the belt at the center of the pulley and this angle is theta okay this angle is what this is theta now you take a small part here somewhere here you take a small part this one okay so i am actually extending this one this is actually very small this part this green one 
is very small, but I am explaining to this one otherwise, this will not be visible to you. Okay. So now you uh, what you will do here, what is the tension? You know this, this tension was T1. In the PPS diagram, I have shown you that that tension was T1 and that this tension was T2. Okay. Now, this is a small part. Okay. I am again drawing this one by using this line. This is the small part. Okay. Say this small part makes an angle of delta theta. Okay. This angle, delta theta at the center of the pulley. This angle is delta theta. Right? So, I am showing here, this angle is delta theta. Is that visible or not? Let me check. Yeah, this is clearly visible. So, delta theta is the small angle. And you now uh, do one thing. Uh, here, at this end, say this uh, center is denoted by O. This point is uh, M. This point is N. And the midpoint of Mn, this is, say, this point is P. Okay. Now, here at point A, you draw the tension. So, say, so tension will be here, tangent. In, in the tangential direction. Say, this tension is denoted by P. Okay. And here at point N, you draw one tangent. And say, this tension will be different from P. So, say, this tension is T plus delta T. Why T plus delta T? Because the arc, arc length M is so small, so we can assume that there will be little difference between tension at point M and tension at point A. Since there is little difference, that's why we have we are written delta T. Yeah? T plus delta T is the tension at point N and T is the tension at point M. And uh, from the midpoint, normal reaction will be acting from the midpoint. So, I am joining this O and P. Okay, O and P. Say this is the reaction R. Am I right? This is the reaction R. This is normal reaction. And due to this normal reaction, and since uh, there is some uh, friction between the belt and the pulley, so say coefficient of friction is mu. If coefficient of friction is mu, then there will be one frictional force F which will be equal to mu R. This is known to you. Frictional force is equal to coefficient of friction multiplied by normal reaction R. So since the pulley is rotating in this direction, so normal reaction, uh, sorry, frictional force will be acting in the opposite direction. Say uh, this is F. I am showing this way. Okay. This is F. Uh, acting in this direction, in the particular upward direction, you can see. If uh, OP is horizontal, in that case it, it will be vertical, otherwise uh, it is just perpendicular to OP, the direction of F. Now, uh, so since P is the midpoint of MN, that means this angle and this angle both are delta theta by 2. I am writing here. Here there is no space, so I am writing here. Both the angles are delta theta by Two. Now you resolve the forces uh, in the horizontal direction. So uh, one more thing, if this angle is delta theta, then it is clearly it is this angle is what? This angle will be delta theta by 2. Okay, this angle between T and between F. Between T and F the angle will be delta theta by 2. So uh, if you resolve the forces in the horizontal direction, then you can see that R, this R, this is equal to R, this is equal to uh, component of T in this direction. In the direction of F is T cos delta theta by 2. Therefore, in this direction means in this direction. Okay. In this direction that will be T sine delta theta by 2. Am I right? Again, okay. here T plus delta T is there and angle is same. That is delta theta by 2. So here also I am writing here. Okay. T plus uh, delta T into 
sin delta theta y2. Okay, this force will be active in this direction. So in this direction, R is there in this direction. T uh, T sin delta uh, theta by two and T plus delta T into sin delta uh, theta by two are there. Okay, these two forces are there. Therefore, R can be written as T sin delta theta by two plus T plus delta T into sin delta theta by two. And since delta theta is very small, so delta theta by two is also very small. And we know that when delta theta by two is very small, then in that case, this uh, sign delta theta by two can be approximated as delta theta by two. This is known to you. Okay. So therefore, uh, from this line, we can write R. This is equal to T into delta theta by two plus T plus delta T into delta theta by two. Okay, so T into delta theta by two is there. T into delta theta by two is there. So this makes T into delta theta. Okay, and one more thing we are getting here: delta T into delta theta divided by two. Delta theta is very small. Okay, and again delta T is, is very small. So if you compare. This term with this term, so you can easily conclude that this term delta t into delta theta by two, this is very very small as compared to t delta theta. Okay, means this is negligibly small, so this can be neglected. Means this can be taken as zero. Okay, so result is R is equal to t into delta theta. This is the result. R is what? R is normal reaction. T is tension. Delta theta is the angle subtended by the small r m a at the center of the pulley. So this thing we have got by resolving the forces in the horizontal direction or in the direction of r. Okay, and now resolve the forces in the vertical direction. So in the vertical direction, f is there. Okay, f is there, and component of t is in the vertical direction. That component is what. T cos delta theta by two, so we can write here uh, f plus both are in the same direction. T cos delta theta by two, okay, both are in the same direction. But T plus delta T component of this is what in this direction is it is T plus delta T into cos delta theta by two, and that component uh, is acting in the downward direction. So we can write that this plus this. Is equal to T plus delta T into cos delta theta by two. Okay, right? And we know that when delta theta is very small, so delta theta by two is very small. And in that case, cos delta theta by two can be approximated as one. Okay. So in the next line, we can write F is what? F is mu r. I have, I have written f is equal to mu r, and here t into delta theta by two, and here in the right hand side, uh, what t plus delta t into delta theta by two. So you can see that here in the left hand side, t into delta theta by two appears, and in the right hand side also, t plus delta theta by two has appeared. Okay, so therefore both are cancelled. So remaining thing is what. Mu r this is equal to this is equal to what this is equal to uh, delta t I sorry 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 I have committed one mistake uh, cos delta theta by two will be one not delta theta by two okay uh, sorry for this okay. Uh, So here I I need to erase this part. Okay. Uh, so in the next line, f is equal to mu r, and this is one. So only t, and here t plus delta t. Okay. This is t, not plus sign. So this t and this t are cancelled. Therefore, what we have got r is equal to delta t by mu. Okay. 
this thing we have got r is equal to delta t by v and here we have got r is equal to t into delta theta so we can say that delta t by mu is equal to t into delta theta uh, so that thing I am writing here delta t by mu is equal to t, in, uh, t into delta theta right so our requirement was to get the ratio of tensions uh, so here this can be written as delta t by t is equal to delta theta by mu am I right? ok, delta t by t is equal to delta t uh, sorry, I am not delta theta by mu it is equal to mu into delta theta mu into delta theta ok, delta t by t is equal to mu into delta theta and in the limit this can be written as dt by t ok, when m is vanishingly small it is tending to zero the length, uh, the arc length m mn the arc length mn if uh, this arc length mn tends to zero in that case this delta t can be uh, can be written as dt and this delta theta can be written as d theta and we have uh, uh, okay. we have done the same thing okay so now you integrate this so again I need to erase uh, some part okay I will erasing this part okay so now in the next line I am so from here this line comes uh, integration dt by t okay it is equal to integration of mu into d theta and you put the integration limit okay so uh, you take here t is equal to uh, t2 and you take t is equal to t1 ok and here you take theta is equal to 0 and here theta is equal to theta so now in the next line what you will got here log to the base e ok and t1 by t2 you will get here ok if you integrate this way from t2 to t1 here from 0 to theta so after integration you will get this one uh, and here in the right hand side since mu is a constant so clearly you will get mu theta ok and therefore the ratio t1 by t2 this becomes what t1 by t2 becomes e to the power mu theta ok so this is this was our target to find out ok the ratio of the belt tensors so ratio of the belt tensors we can see that that is equal to e to the power mu theta so ratio of the belt tensors depend upon the angle subtended uh, by the belt on the driven pulley as well as coefficient of friction ok and this e is exponential e and that is known to you ok so so what so this is the end of this lecture ok ok thank you for watching this video